Recording is on. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sweet. Um, so yeah, so you, you've made a little bit of progress on some of the Plenty CMS stuff, it sounds like. Um, but it'd be great to take a look at that. And then I know I owe you um, some things around uh, NPM imports, um, yep. importing other modules. So there's some there's some problems with the way we're doing it right now. I'm using this thing that I created called GoPack, which is similar to Snowpack. So it's just like kind of like an unbundler um, where it, instead of bundling everything to one file, we're just using ESM imports. But um, previously, GoPack wasn't doing very much besides looking for dot MJS extensions, which are a way to indicate that you have ESM support in your module. Um, but NPM lets you do that in multiple ways, right? You can you can determine your package JSON that you have a module, and then you can just use JS extensions. And GoPack wasn't doing any of that. Um, so I've gone through and I've kind of like rewritten a bunch of that stuff. I'm not completely done um, with it, but there, I've had some progress on that. So hopefully you'll be able to start using um, NPM imports uh, soon. But uh, it sounds like you made some progress even without them, right? Yeah, uh, I started making uh, making the Plenty CMS like independent library, so Perfect. I didn't start making it on top of Plenty, but I made it independent so we can import it in Plenty. Perfect. Whenever we can. <laughs> yep, that makes sense. So you make it just like a, a, a basic stealth project then. Yeah, it um, it's actually the Git repository is now on top of. I haven't pu pushed anything, but it's on it's the same repository as you gave me the link oh great and um or you shared with me in git github mm -hmm. but um yeah i haven't pushed pushed there yet okay because i i was thinking if we should make it separate repository or can we just work there i don't know so, so you, you're talking about like the test repository yeah. repository I put? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, the, feel free to, that thing is just like a, I, I think of that one as like a temporary thing. I mean, that I'm not yeah. worried about just like throwing ideas around there. Um, so feel free to push stuff there if you want. Um, if there's a, another place that works better, let me know and we can work off that. But I, I would think yeah. of the repository I shared is just like, a, that will probably be deleted at some point. I just want it as a way to like quickly share ideas um, and then as the things are working, um, at some point we'll start pulling them into like the actual like um, engine that, that produces this stuff, but yeah. then run us it. Can I now show you what I have done? Perfect. With screen share. Yeah, let's do it. Yep. Uh, oh, it's sharing my whole, both of my screens. So um okay. can you just choose okay, one or the I just other just share my uh browser so okay it's better that way probably although yeah. i'm i should probably share some code also wait wait a sec okay um i will turn my other monitor out off like so Now it doesn't even prompt. Oh yeah, it's blocked. Mm. Now can I you see, see? I do. Yeah, I see a hello world. Yeah, it's the test page I'm using. Awesome. So, uh, actually, this is the old version in live okay. live site, but it's for demoing authentication. So okay, if, cool. if I press this edit link. It go. It actually authenticated already. So wait, wait. Um, I just delete the access token. So mm -hmm. now, if I reload, edit. Oh, okay. It goes to GitLab and authenticates. Oh wow! Uh, it I'm already signed in and granted access. So amazing, it's like that. And here's a edit. Text box. Great. It's, it's pre element just with some attributes. Yep. Title. That's H1 awesome. element. And it preserves the content. Oh, no, this version doesn't, but I will show the local version after this. 
Okay, so this is that's like a deployed version you have on GitLab, you said? Yeah, it's deployed to Netlify currently. Oh, Netlify. Cool. That's great. Um, but if I show the local version, it's example. Yeah, it's the same. But I should comment out the authentication. Mm -hmm. And rebuild. Like so. Okay. Um, edit. And now, if I input something and reload and edit again, it's tester. Great. Awesome. That's yeah, some progress. But no, that's... maybe the internal stuff are more inter interesting than the UI currently. Yeah. Th no, this is some. Uh, simple nav bar for publishing and discarding. Perfect. It's not. It doesn't do anything yet, but yeah. Um, no, that's 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 really great. Um, yeah, I think uh, no. This is this is totally along the lines of of what I'm looking for. So this this is awesome. Do you want to walk me through some of the code just to see how like this stuff is actually working? And yeah, I can cool. do that. So. First is the entry point. Mm -hmm. This is the entry point of the whole library that is imported into the. Are you able to make your text a little bit bigger just for yep. the screen recording? Awesome. Um, Sweet. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, so it checks for a hash, CMS hash mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in address bar. And if it's found, it imports dynamic, dynamically the whole library. Uh -huh. But the entry point is just this. So it's as light as possible. And because it's uh, imported in every page, yeah. it's uh, loaded for every page. OK, great. Uh, but as like for a script with the script tag, for example, it's down at the bottom of the body with differ. So it's the most, uh, the lowest important le importance level for the loading of mm -hmm. JavaScript. And after the entry point loads, it loads this init file or actually the bundle of this init. Okay. Um, it injects the toolbar and uh, initializes the fields. And after, before, uh, after authentication, of course. Mm -hmm. And if we go to the authentication, it's just, um, the GitLab uh, Pixie authentication. Great. Uh, and the token, the server is actually, yeah, about the settings. There's currently um, this plenty CMS JSON file at the, somewhere in the server. I haven't yet found the cor good URL for it. But okay. it, it, it um, has the server for the GitLab server, host, and app ID. Yeah. So the library can load this file and authenticate. Perfect. Um, so something we could probably put into our like site-wide plenty.json yeah. file. Yeah. Um, I was first. I thought that we could have it in the root root URL, like slash plenty CMS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I couldn't do it for a plenty, so I put it in assets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's currently loading it from assets. Yep, uh, that makes sense. Wait, data settings, so it's fetching assets plenty CMS. Okay, great. Um, and then for authentication, are you using Pixie um, yep. for? Oh, great. How, how was that setup process like? Was that Hard to get going. It was 
pretty tricky because yeah. there there's no like there's only the right way to do it. Yep. There are so many tricks, tricks and hoops you, you have to just jump through. Like, um, for example, the, the, the challenge, uh, code verifier challenge. Mm -hmm. It has to be hashed in a like in a specific way. Okay. It's like it's. This was the hard part that I didn't think through and couldn't find anywhere. How yeah, no do documentation. <laughs> Even the documentation, it doesn't doesn't say how how to do it in a JSON. It says, says an example for uh, was Ruby. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So this is a base sixty four encoding, but it's URL safe. So I have to and. It's not this uh, equal sign is for the padding. It mm -hmm. removes the padding and then makes it all safe, URL safe. Okay. By replacing pluses with minuses and <laughs> slashes with oh, yeah, yeah. underscores. <laughs> it's, it's just arbitrary. Yep. That's great. Mm. Cool. And then in terms of, um, so, so sorry. So, so this is like um so this is a separate project the CMS right now right and, and you are yeah. somehow connecting it to a actual planning site or is it, is it completely removed from planning at this point which is totally valid. Um, it's not connected yet to okay. Plenty. Okay. But I have to do something to convert the data into Plenty suitable format. Uh huh. Yeah. Like the, the content, JSON. like the JSON. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And we're, so right now, is the content just hard coded in a Svelte file, or do you actually have like a content source here as well? Oh yeah, the, it's just uh, the content. Okay. Like the Perfect. example page. Yep. Okay. Awesome. It's it's there. It's the static page. Uh -huh. But I plan to. It's not Svelte yet, but I thought I'd make it um, frame, framework in, independent. So sure. we could have Svelte components for objects. So it injects this object attribute into the yep. element. And yep. everything everything can be Svelte component here, but it uses the attributes to find out what's going on in the page. Yeah, nice. And then like if you have an authenticated session, then it makes that content editable based on those yep. attributes, basically. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, can we take a look at that? Like where it actually, where the, the logic is that picks up those attributes and does the. Yeah. So it starts from the init, mm -hmm. init license session. Uh, it finds the field, all, all the fields. Mm -hmm. And uh, the field attribute contains the field type. So it mm -hmm. finds the correct, correct field type and initializes it. Yeah. And the all all field types are just listed here, like hard hard coded, but it's okay, I guess. Yeah. Because right. how how can you add fields without modifying the library? Yeah. Yep. Um. So it. Um. This fields array has, or object has. Uh, every field by type and preset. Preset is like already named field mm -hmm. with some settings already set. I can okay. show the field. It's like different, uh, like a different type of field. Is that what we're... It's it's the same type of field, but okay. it just has different f settings set. You can all also manually set the field field settings in the HTML attribute, but um, this has some like like a um, here's plain text field. Mm -hmm. It has title preset, so it already has pre placeholder title set, and it's not multiline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
by default. Gotcha. Cool. So you can uh, set the field attribute to title and it picks it picks up it up as plain text and places placeholder as title. Mm -hmm. And here's the uh, all the logic for the plain text field. Gotcha. It finds the real value and uh, test test sizes and so on. Great. Here's it's a lot <laughs> action. Yeah. But no, it, uh, but this is really just copy pasted from my own project. The oh, yeah. earlier version of the CMS. Cool. O almost exactly. Like nice. this resizing logic is there and from there. And so what's the resizing logic? Is that just for like the actual text area that you're Yeah, it's for the text text area because it has to resize it uh, mm -hmm. Horizontally and vertically. Oh yeah, yep. Horizontally is easy. It's just um, scroll height to height, mm -hmm. but it has to be in JavaScript. JavaScript. Mm -hmm. But the width is quite hard because it doesn't resize automatically. Yeah. Yep. Text area. So. You have to test test how how uh, what what is the size where, uh, horizontally mm -hmm. with a different element to determine the size for the text area. Cool. That's great. This this looks awesome. And then obviously this at this point it's not saving anywhere, right? It's just kind of giving it's like giving you the authentication. It's letting you you know, get the optional edit um, based on those fields, but it's not actually saving anything yeah, it's anywhere? it's just or? saving locally, like okay. the status text tells. Oh, cool, cool. And when you say saving locally, just like saving in your br like in your browser yeah, for the moment. Browser, okay. yeah. Yeah, gotcha. Local storage. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Great. This is, this is awesome progress, Jesse. You've done a really great job on this. Hmm. Well, there's plenty of do, <laughs> plenty to do. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of A lot to do. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just a start. I mean, I, I think right now we're just like the, the whole idea is we're 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 testing around some ideas, playing with some things, and getting things working, which you've you've definitely done. I mean, getting the whole mm -hmm. Pixie authentication that's huge, um, and then yeah. just having some ideas about editable content. But that's great. So I'm I'm really happy with the the progress. Nicely done. Mm -hmm. um, great. Do you want to? Are there other things you want to discuss on the Plenty CMS? progress or things you need from me? Um, actually, there's, I, I could go, to, go through the whole code base, but that wouldn't pro probably be good time use. Is there, um, do you have this in a public repository that you can share with folks just for people who are watching this recording who are interested in looking at this progress? Um, Not yet, because just as I, I said, I I was making it on top of the test repository. Mm -hmm. but I think it's not. It should deserve its own repository. Sure. Yeah. Do you want to publish what you've done so far as its own repository, and then we can share out that link to people who want to take a look? Yeah. For, awesome. Do I make it for my account? Yeah, you can just make it in yeah. your account. That's that's okay. totally yeah. fine. And then um. I'll reach out to you in, in Discord or something, and we can actually grab the link, and I'll just put it in the comment to this video yep. or something. Um, cool. No, that's that's great. Um, and then we'll have the npm imports working soon. You'll be able to start pulling some of this stuff in, and we can actually see how maybe it'll work in um, just like yep. a starter plenty project. Um, uh, that's great. Uh, anything else? Are there other aspects you want to kind of walk through and take a look at? Um, through the code, or you think we're this is this is pretty good at this point? Um, hmm. Well, there's not not like anything major to to look at that I haven't shown you. Mm -hmm. um, Great, but maybe the logic behind the attributes would be would be one that we could look at still sure 
I lost your screen share though. I don't know if you want yeah, to bring that. Yeah, I in. stopped it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can still still show you. Uh, just open the sc screen share again. Okay. Yeah, can you see it? Um, I can't see it. Uh, uh, not sure. No. No, unfortunately not. Are you able to? Hmm. Need... It says it's great. Uh, shared. Currently. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um. And it's showing me the little. Okay. Preview. Weird. This one says on mine when I click on your profile, it says it that you've stopped the share. Um, Maybe. Oh wait, no. Sorry. No. It says participant has stopped the camera. Um, wait. Can you try to enable your camera again? I don't know if that matters. Um. Weird. It's, it should be sharing camera and screen. Huh. Maybe, maybe if I reload. Then. Yeah, maybe try reloading and see if that, that helps. Out. <laughs> okay, I see you again. That's yeah. good. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Let's try one more time. Maybe a little bug in... Uh platform oh yes I'm, I'm with you now great yeah so you can see the example file now mm -hmm. the HTML. Yes. yeah um, so the data, data cm is just the prefix for all the attributes mm -hmm. but object is an well it's a document in the content folder basic, basically okay. it's just, the key value is the path or id for the document Mm -hmm. And that, like the, where the data source would be, is that yeah? What we're like, for example, pages and slash home should would um, well or block block mm -hmm. and hello. Yeah. So well, this is just uh, kind of like denoting uh, there, where we'll eventually be saving the the data source yeah. back to. Is that what we're thinking? And one page could have uh, multiple objects. Uh -huh. Like there's nested object here for the block blog post. So under this element, it it will save this content to the blog post. Okay. It's just a highlight for the blog post. Great. So yeah. So even if it's not that and that that node page for that content, you could potentially pull another content and then edit yeah. that as well. Yeah, that makes sense. Like it's if it's embedded page, like mm -hmm. embedded par partial page. Mm -hmm. yep. like a, like a highlight or a, a listing yeah you could Makes edit sense. right like if you want to edit want it to be editable you could do that yep that makes and, sense and under right, like right now we have those ma those magic props like we have the content prop in plenty that that should pull in like mm -hmm. the data source for that page and then we have the the all content which you can loop through which would be like that blog um that blog section yeah. you have here cool and then there's the field attribute that specifies where in this object should the data be saved and what kind of data is it it is mm -hmm. like what what field type it is mm -hmm. so if it's just title it's using plain text mm -hmm. like like we saw previously yep and that's where you define the field types on the back end yeah it's it like it's the plain text field type and with the title uh, placeholder if uh, so the placeholder shows if there's no text ah gotcha cool so it's empty mm -hmm. um, but if you want want to define field type and the id for the field like the property in the object basically okay then you can so it it's multi-line text field as like uh, with ID, some multi-line text. And this so ID it, also show, 
will be used as a placeholder if there is no not defined placeholder. Now, is that is that trying to point it to like um, eventually? Obviously, right not right now, but like point it to where the key would be in the JSON that we're updating. Is that what yeah. that? Okay. So the key would be some multi-line text, and then mm -hmm. uh, the multi-line text colon in the beginning is the field type that we're actually yeah. using for the widget on the front end. Yes. Cool. So it, it's actually converting this um, kebab case, if, if that's the correct word. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> a camel case for the JSON. Okay. But maybe I'll maybe it's better to have the camel case right right here also. But it's just HTML prefers kebab case. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah. I, I I guess I don't know what the specifications of JSON allows. Like I I typically. J JSON allows and HTML allow, allows all kind of yeah. text. Okay. So as long as they match them up, they should be okay, I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um there then start the content field. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to have like blocks of content. So it's okay. editable layout and so on. Oh, interesting. Like, like in the previous example of my CMS mm -hmm. project. Mm -hmm. So it defines blocks that's already present in the content field. But so, um, it could also have some other blocks, which can be um, discovered by an event for from this element. So. So uh, the CMS will trigger an event for this div because mm -hmm. it's content. So it's this would allow adding like component. adding different components on a yeah. page, right? And yeah. rearranging those components. Yeah, it, it will first ask, ask for a list of con blocks or components mm -hmm. and then ask to preview them somewhere. So mm -hmm. it will in the framework will initialize the previews for the blocks somewhere. Yeah. It's cool. hard to explain, but. Uh, I, I, I know what you're talking about because yeah. I, I know we've discussed this in the past. So it's kind of like, yeah. just for people watching, I think it, the idea is some, so like there's, there's defined pages, right? So you, a page that mm. always goes title, description, image, right? But then there's sometimes you might want an image above a uh, description or you might want to add some other content and some mm. pages are longer, yeah. shorter than others. This would give you the ability to kind of like add those predefined components in the, your own order that you'd want on the page, yes. right? That's the idea. Yeah, exactly. Cool. And there's the list proper uh, attribute, so that defines a list of objects. Mm -hmm. Its value is the collection of objects. Mm -hmm. So I'm not. I do not remember anymore how, what I wanted to use this attribute for. Mm -hmm. Maybe, oh, oh yeah, now I know. Now I remember for adding new objects for the collection. So it it will add, the CMS will inject a link on top of this or above this element mm. to add new blog post. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so right now, like on the home page for just for people who aren't aware, like uh, the the plenty starter pulls in three blog posts on the home page. Mm. It's like three blue blocks, and this would allow you to like add a fourth or a fifth by just like yeah. clicking in that section. And be like, hey, we want to create a new one of these types because they're all blog posts. That's that's what you're thinking. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So it so so the content could be added from the like near the list. So it would be. A, like very logical place to create new content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's always nice to be able to, you know, when you're looking at, I, I like the idea of bringing editing capabilities closer to the visual parts of the page. Because I think, yeah. you know, in a lot of my client work, I've, I've realized that 
it's difficult for people to go in through a back end like a, an admin and then like find the same things through an admin widget that corresponds to the front end of the website. They want to look at a thing usually and say, I want to manipulate what this looks like. I want to add another item to this. I want to change attributes of an existing item. And that's typically how I think people want to interact. So it's great that you're, you're kind of thinking yeah. that way. That's exactly what I thought from like when building this. Yeah. Um, because you want to interact with the content. You don't want to have a separate place or database yeah. where you in, in, uh, write the content and then preview somewhere else. Uh -huh. That's the whole point of this CMS, yep. I think. Yep, exactly. On top of being a static, uh, st static page CMS. Yeah, uh, basically. Jamstack yeah. CMS. Yeah, just trying to make it like as simple from all perspectives as possible. Yeah. Make it really cheap and secure to host, uh, but also make it mm. easy to edit. Um, basically, I, I just feel like the maintenance for lots of websites are just the, the maintenance cost is too high, and I want to bring that down for everybody. Hopefully. Yeah. Great. And then, then there's the CMS edit link. It will mm -hmm. just have the CMS. Um, fragment so it the library knows when to initialize the cms yep and then sit, yeah so since you've, you've it, but to the url bar great and that's because so you basically you you've loaded the init um script on every page so as long as the init can find that fragment in the url it will it will give you the login process is that what you're thinking there yeah so the entry entry point is or entry point sorry yep and it, the entry point loads init file when it finds out that there's the CMS uh, fragment, URL fragment present. Yeah. Awesome. The entry point is called just plenty CMS to JS. Great. No, this is great. And then just so folks um, who, who maybe haven't heard some of our, all of our planning talk, I know you and I have been talking mm -hmm. about this stuff a lot, but um, the idea is, so right now we're getting kind of like that plain text editing capability, right? But there, there's potential to have all sorts of widgets, right? So like, for instance, yeah. it, before you're logged in, the links, they're like, you know, they're, they're like clickable links. And then when you click edit, you log in and then they become editable links. Those potentially could be something like when you click, you could like have like a little pop-up widget that's like, hey, change the text of this and change the location of where this goes. And it could be like two yeah. field type widgets. So. I'm just trying to help people understand like where where this can where we're, we're planning on kind of going with this stuff in the future. And but. images, you could upload new image eventually to when when we can get all all this working. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Like a, like a displayed image, and then you click yep. on when you're logged in, then you could click on that, and then you could actually like upload a new image from your local computer. You know, something mm -hmm. like that, right? Yep. Maybe look through a library of images that are already on the website. Mm -hmm. You could do things like that if you wanted to. This is awesome progress, Jesse. I think it looks really great. Um, thanks for sharing all this. Do you want me to kill the recording and then we can kind of talk about some other logistical things that you want to discuss? Yeah, it would be good. <laughs> awesome.